Um, thank you very much for the NDF and thanks for you guys uh, for looking awesome. Um, I'm going to be talking about social media, but trying to extend your thinking a little bit and go, trying to go beyond it because you're all young and funky. You all get social media. Been going around for a few years now. Uh, so my history, is, as um, as the man said, is kind of working with lots of big big companies from the Gates Foundation right through to the dark side of the force, like the Cokes and Pepsis uh, and the Ubisofts of this world, and helping them to think about social media in a different way and then to use it. So training them up, basically. Uh, I've got a youth work at local government. And uh, I worked my way up to corporate, and I got out. Uh, I kind of couldn't, couldn't handle it. So that's my background. So I know about like, local government sector stuff. And in my previous iteration with Media Snack as the founder of, we work with a lot of audience theater companies and galleries and museums and stuff like that. So I feel privileged that not that I know anything, but I've certainly had a little flavor of what you guys face day to day. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today, hence why the little graphic is up there, because I do feel that it is a bit cheeky, because you guys at the National Digital Forum should know some of this stuff. So I'm not going to go over what, why Twitter is cool. I'm just trying to try and extend that thinking a little bit further. And let's start um, kind of looking backwards to go forward, which is Vikram lovely kind of provocation this morning. Um, this is 1953. Jack Berry was kicking off Winky Dink and You, which was the first interactive TV program on the planet. Basically, what they got doing was the kids could buy Winky Dink kits, and in it was a piece of acetate. You could hold it up to the, your screen, and at some point during the cartoon, they would stop, and Jack Berry would say, come on, kids, get your Winky Dinks out, and post it up the, on the screen, <laughs> and seriously, and draw with your crayons and fill in. Join the dots, because that's what it was, join the dots, and they would fill, up, fill it out and complete the last kind of graphic, in a sense, and complete the story, okay? And this is, in terms of engagement, or what the youth workers of this world, which is my background, used to call participation 10 years ago, okay? And this is just getting people involved with what you're doing, getting them engaged. But that was in 1953. And I want to show you a couple of stories around that, because now we're at this stage where we've got things like this, which I don't know if you're aware of, but Tweeriad, great little app, you can jump, you know, jump in and see where your followers are. Um, are online in terms of our Twitter, when it's the most popular. This is mine, okay? So I can see my Twitter followers are most active between the hours of 7 and 10 in the morning. So now I know I can strategically push my content out and hopefully they'll, they'll see it. And I can use something called Buffer App, which not only kind of sends my tweets out in timed, like Hootsuite, but Buffer App gives me analytics like this. And I can see the reach and if people are clicking my stuff, okay? So that's how geeky and deep Twitter can get just one platform and that's how geeky it can get in terms of engagement and tracking this stuff if you want to by the way I'm not saying you have to do this I'm just trying to stretch uh, some some metaphor there <laughs> but 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 the point is I want to get you into thinking a little bit differently what social media is really about because I think it's all about this guy in a sense personified this in April the 20th this year I'm sure you celebrated with him because this is his day April the 20th is just in Naps day did you celebrate it I didn't. Um, but basically, if you go on Wikipedia and check out Justin Knapp's page, he's he, he, uh, under Coav. Coav. It's K O A V F. That's his Wikipedia name. He's the first person to edit Wikipedia a million times. I don't know if he's got a girlfriend. Um, but he's been doing it since 2005, but a million edits. And they rewarded him, as in Wikipedia, rewarded him with his own day. April the 20th now will forever be known as Justin Knapp Day. And you can celebrate it. Grow a beard. I don't know what you've got to do for it, but so, simply celebrate it, you know. And that's what I really love about this social media stuff. And it was already touched upon. Uh, the Google Art Project touched upon it in terms of getting people involved. Uh, but this reward idea is really key to what I'm really trying to get to with social media. Most people just push this stuff out and hope people will come. And we really need to get engaged ourselves as users and producers of the content and not just expect everybody else. We throw it up there and just stand back, you know, that's not a good strategy and I'm talking about strategy in a minute. Um, but I really love social media. I've been doing this stuff for about best part of seven years. Uh, I've been teaching right back when I came out of youth work, teaching kids to podcast about seven years ago when people thought it was like the dark art or whatever it was. It's like, what are you doing with those kids? Man, it's wicked. Um, and, and I really love it, not because you can have so much fun with it in that regard, and you can kind of make love to it. I love it while everybody is using social media in some ways, you can be the dude behind, okay? 
Because everybody's using social in the same way at the moment. It's pushing content up there. They're not humanizing themselves. They're just pushing press releases through Twitter. Uh, they're writing blog posts about themselves and stuff. And, and everybody's doing that. And they're making love to each other and stuff. No, 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 no. You've got to get behind this stuff. You've got to have some fun with this, okay? And I just love that graph. Oh, what a brilliant image. Um, so here's kind of some really good ideas. Quick, dirty, simple ideas. You know, already touched on Pinterest. Uh, I think I saw a Pinterest thing coming up there. I just typed in museums literally uh, about a quarter an hour ago. And this is where you go back in, in Pinterest. If you're into museums, obviously, or, or not, swap it out to galleries, put whatever you want in there. And the point is the people are aggregating and creating content for you already. So when it comes to creating content, maybe you just stand on the shoulders of giants and borrow next steal. Uh, embed, whatever you want to call it, it's just there's so much content already out there that you can play around with and have some fun. That's the kind of first point. It's already rich. Um, we talked about the fire hose already, some of the stuff, uh, discussions. And, and I don't want to go too much deeply into kind of examples because when I do show examples, when I do my, like my mini master classes for people um, and I show what's possible, people do this a lot. It's like, and then they realize something. They got to go back. They got to go back to work, you know, and 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 kind of they got get a person and go back to work, and nothing happens because they go back to work and the work is not set up for them to use social media, and this is what I want to get to. Okay, really, what I want to get to is this. This is so important. Put all the technology, put all the platforms aside. It's culture. This is Peter Drucker. I don't have come across him. I, I came across him very recently. This quote. He said that. Culture eats strategy for lunch. And I've been involved with a lot of organizations who want a, cultural, sorry, a social media strategy. And I have said in the past that, you know, we've got to create habitats because habitats form habits. Okay? And it's not about strategies, it's about the people. What's your skills and capacity levels? So that's kind of my angle always I've been for the last six years. Most companies don't want that. And I guarantee you probably bosses don't want They want a strategy. They want a policy. And I say sort off. Seriously, because we need a culture that embraces social media. Okay, this is not a one person's job. Okay, if you're doing good shit, as the provocation right at the beginning, that's everybody should be doing it. Uh, and I'm not saying that everybody should have a Twitter account. I'm just saying it should be at least embraced by most people. If you don't understand it, move out of the way for the kids that do. You know? So that's really my big, big thing. And when I, I read this literally a week ago, this culture each strategy for lunch, and, I, and it was like a boom moment. It was one of these moments. Were you ready? Oh, boom. God bless you. I love gifts. Um, obviously, don't try this at home. Uh, but, but wow. Whoa. But it also did just blow my mind because some of this stuff is just so obvious. You know? Seriously, I just love gifts. It just adds something to it. Um, and if you are unimpressed, I don't know. <laughs> Great. Let me, let me get into it because I really want to revisit this culture, eat strategy for lunch in terms of social media for you guys. Okay? And, and, and I want to give you some raw examples now. We have to become a lot more curious okay, of other people's work. Um, and I don't just mean that as, as an industry, the glam industry here, which is cool and you can borrow ideas and you can have people talking up here from your industry. But I really believe to go forward you must look sideways. Like innovation, more innovation happens outside your sector than in it. So what are the biscuit manufacturers doing? Yeah? Or the shoe companies and stuff. And, and adapt and adopt those models. So in other words, just grab the feeds. There's amazing tumblers out there or great blogs or, or kids coming out of colleges who are mucking around with digital fabrication stuff and, and, and learn from them as much as you learn from your peers. So that's my point. We need to become a lot more curious outside of each other, I think. And social media enables you to do that because of RSS feeds. We've all got RSS readers, yeah, because that is a way of filtering the web and making it come to you. Um, and uh, again, Google Art Project dude, uh, talked about Yahoo Pipes. Wow, yes, you should be all over that. It's so funky and simple to use if you're a nerd and if you think like that. So that's my first one. But I want to share this. I actually, this slide wasn't in my slide deck until I talked to one of my mates yesterday and he said um, about this slide that I talked, that I presented at the uh, New Zealand Library Conference, Lianza, which is a big conference. So I put it back in because I think it is kind of important. And a lot of people at the moment when it comes to their websites or social media is thinking about it in terms of a destination. 
Okay, we want to get people to come here. Think about a physical space yeah, as a destination. And if you think as well a little bit further that the most popular places on the planet are those, not destinations, they're intersections. Okay, literally the physical manifestations of popularity are things like this, you know, train stations, airports, stuff like that. They pass through and they're conduits of. Now think about one of the most popular sites on the planet, which is Google. You don't go to Google and stay on Google, do you? Go to Google, find other things. And think about the most popular sites that you love in your RSS reader, your, your blogs that you really love. You go there and jump off and you go elsewhere, don't you? And Twitter does the same. But apply that to your websites, apply that to your social media um, activities. What you want to do is not pull people to you, but pull people to you and push them onwards to extend their brains and you become that, that um, intersection of amazingness, yeah? where people come to you because you always feature good stuff and send them elsewhere. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's really important, that one. Uh, and essentially, that drives what I do on social media, is trying to give people good stuff and links to go off to. Yeah? I trust people to know that there's a back button on their browser. Yeah? Do you? Yeah, that, in terms of what you do. I kind of love that stuff. The other thing as well is uh, I, I worked uh, with an organization recently and I tried to get um, a commenting system going on internally. I kind of made the point that we, again, push a lot of content out there, but we don't actually comment on existing content. Now, I don't know in the room here if you literally have a comment in policy or strategy in-house, but it's, or even in your brain. <laughs> it doesn't have to be in-house, but in your brain. Do you comment on other blogs? Do you retweet stuff? But then do you expect other people to comment on your stuff and, or retweet your stuff? You really have to add value into these spaces, these community spaces, before you extract from it. Yeah? And that's simple. That's real life stuff. You, know? you, you, you meet people and they give you some cool information or leads or contacts. You're much more likely then to share their contact onto someone else. Yeah? Just real life stuff. Just converted into, into virtual worlds. So maybe the idea here is to stretch social media. It's not about creating content like on blogs, but going to existing content, blogs related to your industries or not, I don't know, but leave little digital breadcrumbs all over the place. Do you know when you leave a comment, you leave a little digital breadcrumb, your name turns into a hyperlink, people can come back. And that all helps with the Google rankings a little bit anyway, you know, trusted links back and forth. So maybe there's something there that you haven't thought about. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm not going to do too much on data, but we just know that we, as, as institutions, as organizations, sit on a lot of it. And, and uh, it's already been shown today um, how funky you can turn data, how, how funky it can be. This is from Square. I don't know if you know Square. It's a uh, micropayment. Not micropayment. It's just a, a payment service. You put it on the iPhone, and you can literally sign your name on the iPhone. It's really cool. It's all across the states at the moment. It's not here at the moment. Um, but this is just one hour of square payments across the United States, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So you can imagine, you know, happy hour, New York, lunchtime, San Fran. So you can see kind of popularity there. And it's really nice, isn't it? But it's really illustrative. Straight away, I can snapshot visually. I can understand that actually it's quite a popular service. And again, we need to liberate, I think, our information and get the hackers in um, and, and share it. You know, raw data is great. We'll get the geeks onto it. They'll, they'll turn it into good stuff. Um, one of the strategies I love to do and love to talk about is the remix inside of things. And I want to share with you a really simple little story, that, and it's something that happened to me. I, I read this book. If you haven't read this book, please do. Um, it's fantastic. It's by the 37 Signals guys, which is a software house uh, based out of Chicago. Rework. And they've they got chapters in there um, that just really stretch your brain, like ASAP is poison. Um, meetings are toxic. Stop having them. So they're really trying to get you to rethink how work works, in a sense. It's great. So I kind of kick it old school now and again, moleskin, and I took notes. I paraphrased every, par every chapter in the book, and I condensed it down, and these are my notes. And I chucked it up on my blog. It's a couple of years ago. Nat Nat was my personal blog, not going anymore, but uh, I had a personal blog, so I chucked it up. Because I actually took photos of my um, notes, and I laid it out, and I made it a nice downloadable PDF. So people can literally just download and scroll up and read the paraphrased version of Rework book, which is nice, cool. You might have done stuff like this in the past. 
Cool. Just sharing what you kind of know. What was from what happened literally about two weeks later? This guy tweeted out about my link, about my post. So this is rework cheat sheet. I called it a cheat sheet, so you don't have to read the book. It's like cheating. Uh, and here's the link to my, my blog post, which has it on. Now, Jason Freed is the author of Rework, who could have gone a different way with that, you know? <laughs> he is American, he could have shoot my ass. You know, he could have done something different here, but no, he understands that he can't get my network. He understands that allowing me to remix a little bit, and I weren't trying to pass off my work as my, his work as my own. I put a link to the Amazon site, so he knew it was part of a, an ongoing process there that he can allow that. So that was kind of fun. And by the way, my, my server went, 50,000 hits in, in that hour, because he's one of the popular kids in the playground. You know, he has like loads of people following him and stuff like that. But what happened next is really nice. Okay, a guy in America, in, in Missouri, something like that, a guy called Rich Gould, never met him, and I never have, might not ever. Uh, took my work, this is my work, my work, the thief, and, and, <laughs> and he remixed it, and he thought it was boring, so he added color. <laughs> and he put it up on scribed.com. Scribed is a place to host your PDFs, just like YouTube for videos, okay? Same thing. So you can see it up there. Now, that was kind of cool, and I, I kind of took a nod and a smile, and I thought, ah, thanks for that, mate, you freak. Um, thank you. You know, too much time in your hands. But then a guy in Sweden, I think it was Sweden, he's got one of those cool names, Vincent Gun Gun. Um, and, and he took that work, not, no, the remixed work, and he remixed it to make it more corporate because he wanted to present it internally. So this is a redux of a remix of a paraphrase <laughs> of a book. Hmm. Um, and I love that, that that happens. And I have no, in theory, control over that. But you know, Jason Fried's looking at this stuff and going, cool, you know, because I'm getting people to know about my work, you know, and getting people coming back. And that's just a really delightful little story about sometimes, even with a good strategy, I could have never have developed that. You know, sometimes it is about being a good community agent again, throwing stuff up there, seeing what sticks, and allowing actually the community to define success what are the terms they think it is, whether that means just putting color on it or making it look a little bit more corporate and cool, yeah? So that's kind of my thoughts around me mixing and extending it. A couple of more things I want to very quickly sh sh uh, throw at you, which I've done in the past. The idea of experts, please talk and podcast and interview other people in your industry outside it. This costs nothing. You've got Skype. It costs nothing to save it and chuck it up on SoundCloud or some other... Kind of things. I did all this uh, for the last five years. I've been podcasting all these people, you know, like the head of social media for Ford. Uh, I, I caught Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. I found him on Facebook. Hey, can I interview you? Yes. So simple to contact most of these people. And again, you're creating really compelling content for your site, and no one else can find it. And it's really good, and you're learning from them. You're becoming experts by talking to the experts. So you're doing that. All the books that you love, contact the authors. They're probably on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and put them on your site and people will come. The other thing I tried to do recently in an organization was try to create some, some kind of ongoing physical things, like let's have a, a soul session around some really cool videos. Or some other stuff I've advised with, with other clients is try to create social media Tuesdays, which is the first Tuesday of every month, doesn't have to be a Tuesday. Uh, first Tuesday, just all the social media geeks get together over lunch and share the, the latest platforms that they're using and they've found out. Yeah, because someone knows about Tweeriad and Buffer App and they're showing a little thing. And again, it's about creating that culture internally of sharing and celebrating and rewarding each other before you go out. Yes, could you do that? It's so simple to start. Yeah, I'm sure there's a couple of colleagues who would be involved in that. So the last couple of slides, I really want to focus a little bit on uh, what's missing. Uh, this is obviously Potato Head. Fantastic. In 1952, this was launched, but for 12 years, it missed a piece. We know Mr. Potato Head is this, don't we? We know the hat, the, the eyes, the mustache, the, the boots. But there was a piece missing for 12 years, a crucial piece. Anybody guess what it is? No, but thanks for playing. The potato. They never sold it with a potato for 12 years because they kind of figured that you had a potato. 
And then the culture was that plastic, fantastic, they could make it, it was cheap, and you know, I drove that, and they could provide it with potatoes, and, and it became nice and tidy, because they realized they were making you know, Mr. Mr. Cucumber heads and stuff, and they didn't want a potato head, it's just you know, controlled. So I want to play with you a very short clip, which brings me to my last couple of points, really. And this is from William Gibson, probably a big fan, you know, the guy who says the future is yours, just unevenly distributed. Okay, listen to what he says about the future and the present and technology. This is really cool. In my lifetime, I don't think the print would have not been madly futuristic. Mm -hmm. I, occasionally, as sort of as a culture, is a way we kind of get used to it. And kind of go, oh, yeah, iPads, you know. Yeah. Gene therapy, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we, we get we get used to it, but I think that's just some kind of, of organic survival <laughs> response to the howling wind tunnel of, of technologically driven change we've been forced down through my whole life now. It never stops. If we're lucky, it never stops. <laughs> Any call? Weird, but cool, okay? A lot of uh, conferences I've been to really try to deal with the future, the future now and all that. And I, and I really think about we need to get a grasp with what's now. You know, what's around the corner? No, 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 are you using what's here now? Before you think about the future, you know, do you know about you know, RSS feeds and mashing it up and pushing it out uh, like, uh, like we've been talking about this morning? Really need to deal with what's now and the technologies we have in the pockets and other people have before we think about haptic technologies and, and all that stuff. Even though we have an eye there, but certainly stop designing in the future. And this is what I want to leave you with, really, last uh, two slides. And this is the idea of desire paths. I don't know if you ever would heard of the phrase before. You've certainly participated in this, I'm sure. The fact that someone has laid down a path and you've decided, or the community, the wider publics have decided to go a different way because it's shorter, yeah? And this, I think, we need to define our social media strategies a little bit like this, you know? Because we're not doing strategies anymore, we're doing culture, yeah? And therefore, with the culture, we need to allow some wiggle room and allow the community to drive where they want to go with it and meet them there, okay? Not say, this is the only way you can get this information or the only experience you can have is through this. Thank you very much, you know? Um, so we really need to cultivate that's what I want to leave you with today, is I cultivate that idea of culture over strategy. Like, I'm sure I could have asked you who's got a social media strategy. I won't, by the way. But if I asked you who's got a cultural strategy around using social media, okay. And this is stuff that I'm playing with just recently, by the way, and this is newly formed stuff. Uh, but I, hopefully I've kind of given you some cool ideas, um, provocations and kicking the shins at some point, but hopefully I've delighted you and that's what I want to do. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm here all day. And thank you.